Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the next, the second lecture of the course called Game Theory and Economics. Uh, this second lecture will focus on things like interacting decision makers and uh, of course we shall continue this lecture from the previous lecture. Uh, if you remember in the previous lecture we talked about the basic idea of games, what is meant by games and game theory. We said that in game theory we try to study how uh, decision makers interact. Uh, these decision makers may be people uh, like <coughs> husband and wife, they are trying to decide where to spend their evening or these decision makers may not be people but firms. For example, two companies deciding what price to charge for their products or these decision makers could be uh, two countries governments uh, deciding on uh, what tariff to charge for the imports that they, you know, uh, the imports that they take from other countries. So decision makers try to interact with each other and decision of a particular player, we shall, what they use player for a decision maker, the decision of a particular player affects what the other player is getting, the benefits that he is getting out of this whole process and that is what Make it makes it more interesting because not only my decision affects my benefit, it is the decision of the other player also which affects my benefit. So this is what is game theory. This is what we try to study in game theory, how we can analyze such situations and is there a way to influence such kind of interactions through our understanding of uh, game theory. So this is the starting point that we discussed in the previous class. We said that one of the uh, founding stones of this game theory is the theory of rational choice. Uh, what does it mean? Theory of rational choice essentially says that it basically says that any player or any what in economics we call economic agent at any point of time has a number of actions to take, he or she takes that action which is best suited for him, which maximizes his benefits. Uh, now when we say that it maximizes his benefits, one must also have an idea about the preference pattern of that person, of that player. So, when we talk about the theory of rational choice, two information are known to us. One, what are the actions available to a particular player and number two, what is the preference pattern of that player? If we have an idea of these two things of a particular player, then we can immediately say, look, this is the choice that will be made. This is the action that will be taken by that player. Now, uh, this is the first thing. But at the same time we know that uh, it might happen that uh, out of all the actions that an individual has access to, there are more than one action which can be taken which is best or which are best for that player. So in that case we are not very certain which exact action that player will take but we can say that this, this and this maybe three actions are best for him and he will take one of them and not the others, that we can of course say. Uh, so uh, and also <coughs> theory of rational choice also implies that the choices made by the uh, players or the economic agents must be consistent. By consistent we mean that if he chooses any action A suppose over another action B, then if there is another situation where 
A and B are available to him, then he will never take action B uh, if A is available. So this is what is meant by consistency. Consistency also means that if A is preferred to B and B is preferred to C, then A should be preferred to C. This principle is known as the principle of transitivity. So, uh, in the remaining part of this course, we shall continue with this assumption that uh, the, the decision makers, the players in the games uh, follow the theory of rational choice. They abide by the theory of rational choice. Whenever they are faced with some choice of actions, they take that action which is best suited for him or her. So, this is the uh, this is again something we have discussed in the previous class. I am just trying to uh, recapitulate what we have done very briefly. <coughs> now, let me go a little bit further and say that this is the framework that we have in economics, basic economic theory that people make take actions which is best for him or her. Uh, and that basically what we say maximize that action or more than one action maybe those action action those actions maximize the utility of an individual now here a particular variable is maximizing a particular individual's utility function or what we define in the previous class as the payoff function so payoff function in the standard economic theory where there is no game theory, the payoff function suppose u is a function of a single variable, there is no other variable here. Okay. So, if a is chosen in such a way that u is the highest value, then uh, u is the action that is going to be taken by that player. <coughs> but in game theory, we are moving away from that framework. We are moving away from that framework because if you remember, here we are talking about interactions. So, it is not the case that a single individual is taking action and that is the only thing that is affecting his payoff. It is the case that this individual is, co is his payoff or what is getting out of this situation is being affected by the decision of other players also. So, it might be the case that there are two people, maybe A and B and suppose U A is the pay of function of A then we know u a is of the form this u a is a function of small a and small b where a is the action of a and b is the action of b and that makes it more complicated but interesting because here when A is capital A is choosing his action may be small a that is affecting U A, but that is not the only thing that is affecting U A, it is being affected by U B also. I mean it is affecting, it is being affected by small b also. And uh, if B changes that affects the utility of A and it can work the other way also. I mean you have U B which is a function of a small a small b, which means the benefit that b capital B is getting, it is getting affected by the action that he is taking which is small b, but it is also getting affected by the action that is taken by capital A and there we have an interaction and we want to see how in game theory this interactions take place, how I take into account the actions that are going to be taken by the other player and similarly for the other player, how he is going to figure out what action I am going to take and ultimately what is likely to happen in these situations. So, this is this is what we are going to study in game theory in brief. <coughs> uh, 
in this this class we are going to start from this framework i am going to introduce some preliminary games of a particular kind i am going to describe that particular kind that particular kind will be called uh, strategic games So this is a class of games which are called strategic games and uh, if you remember in the last class we said that the payoff functions that we have are called ordinary, ordinal payoff functions or uh, another way of saying this is the following we say that the preference of players is ordinal. What does it mean? Uh, it means that if an individual ranks the choices available to him, uh, in this case the choices are not merely his actions, it is more complicated because the actions of other players are also involved. Whatever it is, if a player ranks the choices, then the ranking the absolute value of the rankings do not matter. What matters is the relatively what the rankings are. So, if the rankings are such that uh, suppose bigger number means more uh, like more liking for that option. So, if this is one ranking, this is suppose A, this is B and this is C, this is the first choice, this is the second option and this is the third option. So, here player 1 is suppose this is the player 1 player 1 is attaching number 10 to the first choice, 5 to the second choice and 1 to the third choice. This is one ranking. What ordinal preference will say is that if the ranking is something like okay, 1 lakh, 0 and minus 1, they will do just as well. There is no difference between this ranking and this ranking in the ordinal sense because in the first ranking 10 is greater than 5, 5 is greater than 1. In the second ranking also 1 lakh is greater than 0, 0 is greater than minus 1. So, what matters is relatively uh, how A and B and C are ordered. Here A and B and C are ordered in the same way, qualitatively same way. So, this is ordinal preference. We are going to assume that the, the individuals have ordinal preference. The, the payoff function that we have, uh, they reflect ordinal preference of the individuals. <coughs> uh, so, let me now so begin uh, with the next topic that, that is I am going to introduce some strategic games, some standard strategic games uh, uh, and I am going to define what is a strategic game. But before that, <coughs> just, uh, just a way of introducing, uh, I said that here when the players interact what matters is the action of others also. So, this was an abstract way of saying something, but let me try to give you, give you some examples in which it can be seen that how the action of other players can affect me. Let, the, let me take the case of uh, two political parties for example. again suppose A and B and uh, what is the action that they are taking? Maybe they are before the election they are announcing how much money that they are going to spend after if they get elected. Uh, now the money that A is going to spend after and if it gets elected is going to affect the amount of votes that it gets because the people who are the voters, they, accord, they may think, let us assume that they think that the more money the government spends, it is better for them. Some part of it at least will trickle down to them. So, here suppose capital A is deciding X, the amount of money that it, it is going to spend 
and y is the amount of money that b is going to spend if and when it is elected to the office. Now here you see the value of y is going to affect the prospect of a's winning, it is going to affect the prospect of winning of b also. So x and y affect the chances of winning of both the parties. It is not that x is affecting only chances of A, it is affecting the chances of B also. So this, this is why what, what is meant by this interactive process that what I am deciding, what I am doing is affecting you. Uh, I can give you some other examples also, the standard economics example that we often make that two firms are interacting in the sense that uh, uh, suppose this is the profit that is made by pi, pi is the profit made by a particular company A. Now profit by company A depends on the price it charges, suppose it charges a price P A, but it also depends on the price that is charged by another company, company B. So to make it simple, in reality it is more complicated. In uh, to make it simple, suppose there are only two companies who, which are selling similar products. So what price the second company charges, which is PB, is going to affect what is the market share or how many, how many goods the first company, that is company A can sell in the market. So both of these things is, are affecting the profit of A. Similarly, pi b is a function of p a and p b. So the examples can be given, plenty of examples can be given, I am just, uh, uh, just give, giving you some introductory examples, very simple kind of examples. <coughs> so without much ado then, let me, uh, let me start with this topic of strategic games of uh, with ordinal preference. Now what is meant by strategic game with ordinal preference? <coughs> I am trying to define it uh, uh, very briefly. In a strategic game, three components must be specified. Firstly, who are the players or who are the decision makers? So the identity of the players and how many are there should be given. Secondly, often we say the set of players to be capital N, but obviously it is a matter of convention. Uh, secondly, what are the actions that are available to each of the players? These are called action sets. So if I belongs to capital N, then I should have an idea what is AI, where AI is the set of, oh sorry, set of actions available to I. So A1, A2, dot, 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 AN, N sets will be there. Uh, each will have some elements and it is not necessary that the number of actions available to a particular player is same as the number of actions available to another player. And thirdly, what we need to know is the preference of each player. What is meant by this is that uh, since this is an interaction, interactive process that we are talking about, what happens it, is that at any play of the game, any action has been, some action has been taken by some player. So in a particular play of the game, what we have a list of actions, each taken by one player. So it will like look like this. Suppose A1, A2, dot, dot, AN, 
where there are smaller number of players. Now, this is this where let us call it like this small a i belonging to capital a i, which means that a i action has been taken by the ith player and a i belongs to capital a i. Now, this is called this vector or this list of actions taken by each of the n players is called an action profile. It is a profile of all the actions taken by all the players. Uh, if there are n number of players, then it is a vector of n elements. Now, what we need to know is that how the players are ranking these action profiles. There will be plenty of action profiles in any game. Now, the players will be required to tell us or it is it should be known to us if we want to analyze the game that which action profile is preferred by a particular player over other action profiles, how he ranks these action profiles. So, by the third element of strategic games which is we have defined it as preferences, preference of each player. What we mean is that this should be properly defined. Ui if you remember is the payoff function, ordinal payoff function. of i. So, an ui is defined over action profiles and we have to know what are the values of e ui for each possible action profile. And uh, if I know that, I know the preference of each of the players. For example, let me give you an example so that it becomes clear. Suppose there are two players. Again, let us suppose A and B. Uh, no, let us not take A and B because A stands for action. Let us take the players to be 1 and 2. Okay. Now, suppose A1, which is the set of actions of player 1, is equal to small a1, small a2 and A2 which is the action profile of the second player, sorry not the action profile, the set of action of the second player is consisting of two elements B1 and B2, small B1 and small B2. Uh, in this case, how many action profiles can be, uh, can be constructed? So, action profiles will be here 4 in number. It is obvious because the first element of the profile should come from the action set of the first player. Now, there are two possible actions taken can be which can be taken by the first player. So, the first first position here in this action profile can be filled up in two ways. The second position can be filled up in two ways, 2 multiplied by 2 is equal to 4. And what are they? Just for the sake of detail, A1, B1 a 1, b 2, a 2, b 1, a 2, b 2. If it had been the case that uh, instead of b 1, b 2, we had a third action for player 2, then the number of action profiles would have gone up. It would have gone up to 6 because then the first position could have been filled up uh, in two ways, the second position could have been filled up in three ways, 2 multiplied by 3 is equal to 6. So, uh, depending on the action, the size of the action sets of each player, the number of action profiles can go on rising. And of course, you can see if the number of players is also more, here there were two players, but suppose there were more players, n number of players, then each action profile would have consisted of n elements. 
Now, this is by the way of introduction. What is the main point? The main point is that the preference, when we say that the strategic game should tell us what is the preference pattern of in each individual, we by that we mean that how the pair function of an individual is defined over the action profile. That should be known to us. That is what is meant by uh, the knowledge of the preference of each player. Uh, this is the first thing. Uh, one very important aspect of strategic games is that here, when we say that this is the action of the first player, that is the action of the second player, the idea is that these actions are taken simultaneously. Which means that when I am taking an action, I do not know what is the action taken by the other player because both this both the actions are taking place at the same time. If they are say, taking place at the same time, I do not know beforehand what is the action that is going to be taken by the other player. Uh, so this is one reason why uh, strategic games are also called simultaneous move game. The move by move it means the, the actions, the taking place of the action. The actions are take, taking place at the same time and since the actions are taking place at the same time, they are called simultaneous move game. This is one way of looking at strategic form game. Uh, another way of looking at uh, strategic, for, strategic game is not to visualize that the actions are taking place simultaneously, but to say that well, it is possible that the actions are taking, taking place, suppose here A is taking an action, here B is taking another action, that is they are occurring one after another. But the point is that when A has taken an action, B cannot change his action, which means that at the beginning of the game itself, B is saying that I am going to take suppose B2. Uh, that is that he is announcing in the beginning of the game once and for all. When A has, when the game begins and A has taken an action suppose A1, then B cannot say okay he has taken the action A1, now I will not take B2, I will take some other action, that is not allowed because he has already announced that I am going to take B2 in the beginning of the game. So here though the, uh, the game is not simultaneous move, it is happening one after another, it is a sequential form of game. But since the second player who is to move next has already announced what he is going to do uh, in the beginning of the game itself, it is as good as a simultaneous move game because here also nobody knows what the other player is going to do. So this is another interpretation of uh, strategic form game. <coughs> now, so this is uh, by way of introducing strategic form game. Now we shall start with the real stuff. We are going to introduce one game after another and as I have told you in the last class, uh, games are nothing but abstract models. So when we introduce a particular game, it is not the case that the description in that game is very much important to us, the details of the description. It is the case that essentially that game is capturing a uh, a situation which we can find in many different forms, maybe the details are little different but essentially they are the same, essentially qualitatively they depict the same kind of situation. Uh, let me give you an example and let us, this is the first game that I am going to introduce here, this is a strategic form game with ordinary preference and the game is called. Prisoner's Dilemma. In short, it is also called PD, P for Prisoners, D for Dilemma. <coughs> now one very interesting thing about game theory, study of game theory is that each game has a story. 
uh, and uh, we like stories. So that maybe makes game theory a little interesting than other boring subjects. So what is prisoner's dilemma? What does it describe? <coughs> uh, here the story is the following that suppose there is a town uh, since all these examples mostly come from US. Let us suppose this town is in America and in that town there is a big crime like a, maybe a bank robbery. Okay. Now, so it's a big time crime and the police have apprehended two suspects from that locality who could be the real criminals. But these two people uh, who the police have cap captured are basically known petty thieves of the locality. And so we have two petty criminals who have been captured. And it is known that if any of them uh, has been involved in this robbery, it must have been the case that the other person was also involved these two are partners. Now, these two people, petty criminals have been put in two prison cells by the police. Uh, the, 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 the significance of the two prison cells is that they cannot communicate with each other. The police can interrogate them separately. They cannot talk to each other. And now the police has enough evidence to put them, both of them, to the jail for petty th thievery because they are known to be you know local level criminals. Now when they cannot prove that uh, these people have committed the, this big crime, the bank robbery. So even if they say that we have not committed this bank robbery and the police cannot prove that, police cannot prove that they have uh, robbed the bank, even then they can be put to jail. And if they go to jail, they go for one year each. One year each. So this is the case when the people are not confessing, they are not, they are saying that we have not committed the crime and the police can cannot prove that they have committed the crime, this big crime. Second case, let us say, both of them say that we have committed this crime, we have robbed the bank. Now, if both say that, both confess, let us say, to robbery, then obviously the charge is more serious. They have committed the crime. Uh, it is uh, admitted by them. Then both of them uh, go to jail for three years each. So these are sentences. Prison cell. Uh -huh. Okay. Now uh, just uh, just let me specify. When there is no proof of robbery, that is the same case where these criminals, these petty criminals are not confessing. So this is the case where nobody confesses, none confesses. So if none confesses, the police cannot prove anything, they are given one year's imprisonment each. What can be the other possibilities? The third possibility could be that one confesses, the first, first prisoner confesses that he has robbed the bank. Now remember, when he says that I have robbed the bank, obviously he implicates the other person also because it is known that they, if anyone has committed the crime, the other person has been an accomplice. So if one confesses, he is in effect is turning to be the state's witness. He is helping the uh, police to solve the case, in which case his crime is supposed to be lessened. He is then not put to prison at all, then he is let free, he is freed. 
So in that case, the first person is freed. But as we know that these people have committed the, may have committed the crime together. So if one confesses, two does not, then two is in effect implicated in that crime. So and his charge is more serious now because not only had he committed the crime which has been proved by one's confession, but he did not confess either. So he did not cooperate with the police. So his charge is now uh, more serious. So he goes to jail for five years. For two. And similarly, the other thing will be two confesses. One does not. So in this case, two is freed. five years for one because he is not cooperating but he had committed the crime too. So this, these are the incentives that are given by the police to the prisoners. The prisoners are stationed in two cells. The police, has, have, the police have given them these choices uh, that look if you confess the other person also confess, if you confess the other person also confesses then both of you will go for three years. If neither of you confess, then again you will go to jail, but not for bank robbery, but so that will be less uh, years, it will be one year. Uh, if you confess, the other guy does not confess, then you will be freed and the other person will go for five years. And vice versa, if you do not confess, other person confesses, then you will go for five years, the other person will be freed. So this, this is what the police tells the prisoners. Now if uh, this is the situation, then we can frame this entire situation, this uh, story, uh, what the prisoners will do, what uh, will be done and uh, that we, we shall look into a little later. But this entire story can be framed in terms of the tools that we know of strategic games. Uh, what we need to know in strategic games as I have just told you is that we need to be sure about three elements. First is the number of players. So here who are the players? Here the players are obviously the, these two thieves, these two prisoners because now they are going to make a decision what they are going to do, confess or not confess. So players here are two prisoners. Secondly, the second element of a strategic game is that we need to know the actions, possible actions available to the players. So here for both the players, the action set is the same. Uh, and what is that action set? It is confess. They can either say that we have committed this bank robbery or not confess. He says that I did not commit the crime. Uh, so this can be, we shall in short write it as C and NC. All right. Thirdly, preference. We need to know what is the preference of each prisoner. Now given what I have presented before, uh, it is easy to see what is the preference of the prisoners. Now there are how many uh, action profiles? Uh, since there are two players, each has two action, so that two actions, so that means there will be four possible action profiles. The four uh, possible action profiles are the following. Uh, NC, NC, this is one where no, nobody is confessing. Another will be CC, both are confessing. And another will be CNC, and another will be NCC. These are the possible four profiles. Now, uh, 
how did I, what is the order of this, uh, these two elements in a particular action profile? The first element is the action of the first player. So NCNC means first player is not confessing, second player is also not confessing. Uh, whatever, whatever NCC, it means that the first player is not confessing but the second player is confessing. Now given the information uh, I have given to you just now, uh, it is easy to see which one will be preferred to the first player which will be the second best for the first player, third and fourth. The first best for the first player is that he is freed, he is not put to jail at all. And when does that happen? Oh, sorry. The first player is freed if this happens, if first player confesses and the second player does not. Uh, so this is the case of C and C. This is the action profile. This is the best for the first player. What is the second best? The second best is that the first player goes to jail but for a short period of time, uh, for one year. And which happens if nobody confesses. So NCNC is the second uh, best for the first player. NC NC. So, U1 of CNC should be greater than U1 of NCNC. U1, if you remember, this is a payoff function of first player. So, U1 of CNC is the highest. Uh, so, that is why I have written it in the leftmost part. Then comes NCNC, where both of them have go are going to the jail, but not for bank robbery. Uh, so, that is for only 3 years. What is the third best? The third best is that, well, they both confess and uh, go to jail for three years. So, sorry, in the previous case, they were going for one year. Uh, so, this is the case of CC. Both of them are confessing to the bank robbery and since both of them are cooperating with the trial, uh, they are going to jail for three years. And the, what is the worst possible case is that the first player does not confess, but the second player, his friend, is, conf is confessing. Uh, so this is the case where the second player basically, who, who was the partner of the first player, is ditching him, is cheating him. Uh, he is not only getting scot free, but he is putting his friend to five years in jail. So this is the last uh, element in this chain. This is the case where he is not confessing NC, but his partner has confessed and in effect the partner has implicated him to this bank robbery. So this is the preference pattern of the first player. What about the second player? It will be just kind of opposite thing, not exactly opposite but nearly. For the second player, the best is that he is freed and the first player goes to jail because if he is freed, automatically the first player goes to jail for 5 years. So here he is confessing the second player but the first player does not, NCC. Similarly, the second best will be both of them are not confessing and going to jail for 1 year. Third best is that both of them are confessing, going to jail for 3 years. And lastly uh, is the case when the first player is cheating. So he is confessing, the first player is cheating, the first element, but the second player does not confess, so he is put to jail for 5 years. Now this is what we know that this is how the uh, payoff functions, the value of the payoff function should look like. And if you remember, we have ordinal preference here. Now since ordinal preference is the thing that we have here. So it does not matter what numerical value I attach to each of this uh, u1 of this, u2 of etc, etc. It does not matter what absolute numeral, numerical value I attach as long as those numerical values, those four numerical values are ordered in this fashion, relatively they are ordered in this fashion. Uh, so the numbers that we shall choose, the numerical values that we shall choose will be the simplest possible numerical values to deal with 
and uh, the simplest possible I can choose is 0, 1, 2, 3, whole numbers, whole numbers are easier to deal with and easier to understand also, whole numbers and positive numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3. So, here also this is 3, 2, 1, 0, 3 is greater than 2, 2 is greater than 1, 1 is greater than 0. So, this is how the preference looks like. Again, the entire story and the preference, num the players, what are the actions available to them, they can be summarized in a very cute fashion by what is known as a payoff matrix. So, what is a payoff matrix? So, payoff matrix is obviously, it is a collection of cells as any matrix is. Let me write it somewhere else. And here, player 1 is situated here, player 2 is situated here. This is the first row, first column second row, second column. <clears throat> what it means is that player 1 is, uh, when I wrote player 1 on the left hand side, just beside the rows, it means that the player 1 is choosing the row. He can choose either the first row or the second row. Uh, and each row is standing for each action. So, since the player 1 has two actions to choose from C and N C, here the rows are called C and N C. So, he is choosing any of these actions. Similarly, player 2 is can choose either of these two actions, but here they are columns not rows. Uh, given this, there are 4 cells and each cell basically is representing an action profile. For example, this cell is the first cell is representing the action profile C C. This uh, top right cell is representing the action profile C and C, that is first player is choosing confess, the second player is choosing not confess, etc, etc. Now, what we are going to write in these cells, in each of these four cells is the payoffs that the players are getting. Now, if you remember uh, the numbers that I have imagined for this payoff functions value of the pair of functions. If uh, C and C is the action profile, the first player gets 3, C and C, so this is 3. However, if C and C is the action profile, what does player 2 get? It is this one, the last one. Here player 2 is getting 0. So, this is, this is how this is filled up, this uh, box is filled up, this cell is filled up. Uh, let us concentrate on CC. If CC is the action profile, then uh, I can check from the previous page that both are getting 1. Okay. Then let me come to NCC. If NCC is the action profile, then uh, this is the best case scenario for player 2. He is getting 3, but this is the worst case scenario for player 1 because he is not confessing, the other person is confessing. So, player 1 will go to jail for 5 years. So, this is 0. Lastly, if both of them do not confess, then they are going to jail for uh, 1 year, right. If they are going to jail for 1 year, then that is what we have uh, represented by the number 2. So, this is 2, 2. Uh, so, this is the idea uh, of a payoff matrix, this is called a payoff matrix. Uh, a little bit of observation into this payoff matrix will be very helpful. Firstly, if I compare these two outcomes, these two action profiles of 
C C and N C N C, which is basically this and this. What do I find? I find that it is better for both of them to not to confess. If they do not confess, either of them does not confess, then they are getting 2, which is greater than 1. And uh, by rational theory of rational choice, uh, both of them will like this outcome N C N C to the outcome C C, which means that if they could have communicated with each other that look, let us have this common strategy that neither of us confesses, then that will be better if both of us confess. So, if they could have done that, they would have gone for NCNC. So, in this case, there is a kind of cooperation, there is a kind of coordination between the prisoners which would have given them a better payoff too compared to the case where both of them are confessing. But the question is, does this happen? Will this happen? Uh, if player, uh, let us think it from the point of view of player 1. Player 1, if he knows that the player 2 is not going to confess, all right, then is it better for him to not to confess? You can see that if player 2 has chosen this column, that is not confess, then player 1 will compare between this and this. And if he chooses C, what is it that he is getting? He is getting 3. If he is choosing N C, that is he is also not confessing like uh, player 2, then he is getting 2. Now, since 3 is greater than 2, by the, three, by the theory of rational choice, we know that if player 1 knows that player 2 is going not to confess, going to not to confess, then player 1 will go and confess. So, in a, in a way he is going to ditch on his friend, he is going to uh, break this kind of agreement if he, there had been any agreement, if they had an agreement that let, let us not confess, then from the individual rational perspective of player 1, he would not have respected that agreement. If he had known that player 2 is not going to confess, he would have gone and confessed. So, uh, this outcome which would have been better than this, this is better than this, will may not last because each of the players ha has a tendency or has an incentive of not confessing because this I, I have given you this illustration from the point of view of player 1. The, this since the game is more or less similar from the point of view of player 2 also, the same logic can be applied to player 2. For uh, Let me just go over this. If player 2 knows that player 1 is going to choose NC, that he is not going to confess, then player 2 will then compare. What do I get if I confess? I get 3. What do I get if I do not confess? I get 2, 3 is greater than 2. So, in which case I will confess. So, if I know other person is not confessing, it is best for me to confess. So, this is the, uh, this is the whole idea of, <coughs> this is the whole idea of prisoner's dilemma and this is known as free riding. So, what is meant by free riding is that uh, if there is a good outcome which is com coming out of some cooperation, in this case it is NCNC, there is a cooperation among the prisoners, not the cooperation between the prisoner and the police. There is a cooperation, a kind of understanding between the prisoners that look, let us not uh, confess, in which case it is better for both of us, we are getting two. If that is the kind of situation that is likely to prevail, then from the individual rational perspective of each of the prisoners, it is best to break that kind of understanding. Each would, will like to free ride on the others, each will like to put the other partner into danger 
and we like to uh, get saved from this jail sentence. So that is what is meant by free riding. And uh, another interesting thing is that if you look at it, at this game a little bit carefully, at this payoff matrix, is that it is. Let us take it from the point of view of player two. If player two knows that player one is going to play n c, obviously, as I've said, he is going to play c. But if he player two knows that the player one is going to play c, then what does he do? Again, you see that he is going to compare one, which he gets if he plays c, and zero, which he gets if he plays n c. And he says that c is that one is greater than zero, in which case he will play c. So, does not matter what the other player is doing, it is always better for each of the players to play C. Uh, uh, so, if even if the other player is playing C, I am going to play C, I am never going to play N C. This is the another, another aspect of this prisoner's dilemma. Let me wrap up this lecture uh, by a few observations and what we have covered in this lecture. What we have introduced today is firstly, we have said that. Uh, game theory is different from the standard traditional, for example, microeconomic theory, what we call microeconomic theory, uh, in the sense that in microeconomic theory, the, the basic microeconomic theory, the individuals take their ac actions uh, as if their action is all that matters to them. It is not taken into consideration that other players activities may affect my well being my benefits or my losses so that that is not there in game theory we move away from that framework we move away from that framework uh, in the sense that we take into account that our action is going to affect our benefit or losses but we also take into account the fact that other people's action may also affect us that is the first and the most important thing about game theory that there is a kind of interactive process what you are doing is affecting me and vice versa that is the first thing we said and secondly we have introduced uh, the the idea of strategic form games or strategic games with ordinal preferences uh, what are the basic requirements of this strategic form game with ordinal preferences and we have also introduced the first uh, game that uh, which is known as prisoner's dilemma we have described the game the essential points of them the game we have described okay this is a new notion of Pareto optimality which we are going to use in the later lectures so i am introducing this concept here itself This is the exercise for lecture 2. Uh, we have two questions in this exercise. First question is what is a strategic game? What are the three, what are its three components? So strategic game like any game, strategic game is a model of interacting decision makers. So decision makers are called players players this is the first element second element each player that is each decision maker has a set of actions to choose from and third each player has a specified preference over the action profiles. What is meant by action profile? An action profile 
is a, a vector of actions. Each action taken by a an individual player. One important component of uh, strategic game has no time component. So, uh, we can think this in terms of the following uh, conceptualization that each player is not informed of choices made by other players. when he when he makes his own choice so it is as if uh, the game is being played and the games are Alternatively, the game is being played and the actions are taken simultaneously. Are assumed to have been taken simultaneously. So, this is the first question. Second question describe the prisoner's dilemma game. <coughs> so, prisoner's dilemma game, it has two players, actions, confess or not confess preferences let me write it for just one player what is best for him that he confesses the other player does not confess this is better than neither confesses this is better than both confess and the last and the worst case is he does not confess the other player confesses and this is for player 1 likewise there will be for player 2 also and if we attach numbers to this payoffs we get the following uh, payoff matrix this is the payoff matrix so this is how the prisoner's dilemma game is uh, defined uh, and in the next class we shall take up from this we shall see what are the other situations who, which we find in real life and which is like the prisoner's dilemma because at the end of the day we are not really interested in what two prisoners isolated in some uh, American town should do we are more interested in knowing what real life situations can be understood from that basic prisoner's dilemma kind of situation. Okay, thank you.